Please welcome Honorary Founding Mother and President Emerita of the Ms. Foundation for Women, Marie C. Wilson. my honor to be with you tonight to present the Marie C. Wilson Leadership Award to an innovative journalistic editor, wonderful and fashionista, who has been paving the way for young women. She is one of the coolest women in journalism, but we also share a name. She is Elaine Marie Welter Roth, and a name you will know. She is the editor in chief of Vogue, Teen Vogue, making her the second person of African American heritage in Condé Nast, his son 07 year history. To hold such a title and the youngest editor in chief, her ascension to the role of editor in chief marked the beginning of a new era of content creation, of reporting in the now 15-year-old magazine's history. Most notably, she was extremely influential in the magazine's revitalization. She's credited for the noble, uh, notable increase of Teen Vogue coverage of politics and social justice. Encouraging readers to become civil, civically engaged, specifically during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Under Elaine's leadership, the magazine developed its first YouTube channel featuring content on diverse subjects. In 2018, Elaine stepped down from her position as editor-in-chief, Teen Vogue, but not before she graced the screen, playing herself on blackish and grownish, and ushered in the inaugural Teen Vogue Summit, bringing together today's women leaders, including mission minded activists, civic leaders, and politicians. Clearly, Elaine made her mark and continues to make her mark on the world of journalism and beyond. I, for one, am excited for what comes next for this dynamic leader. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the year Marie C. Wilson Emerging Leader Award to Elaine Marie Welderon. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am energized tonight. I am energized to be here. I am energized to be a woman, to be black, to be living in the age of Ava and Marley, to be breathing the same air as Gloria Steinem, to be alive and activated in the age of Time's Up and not one more. What I know for sure, to quote Oprah, which I enjoy doing, is that the work of my generation and the next is built on the backs of women like Marie C. Wilson, who this award is named after, whose work challenged the status quo on equality before there were stages for it. The work we're doing is built on the backs of women who stood for women before it was the trendy thing to do. Before there were these viral rallying cries known as hashtags that showcased the power of our collective voices. And so what I know for sure as well is this, there would be no Teen Vogue without Miss Magazine. And while my work there is done, the work for many of us in this room, including me, has only just begun. And listen, we have work to do, y'all. We have a lot of work to do. We know the statistics. 
we know that women in leadership roles directly correlate with better business outcomes, including employee satisfaction and financial profitability, yet only 23% of women hold senior executive positions with a title that includes the word chief. That's a problem. We know women are still being underpaid for doing the same work that men are doing. That's a problem. But we know that there's also some good news. And the good news is that the next generation of girls aren't seeing themselves as employees anyway. They see themselves as bosses, as founders, as directors, as activists, as organizers. These are change makers. And we're raising them to know that they don't need an appointment to show up to do the work that they were put on this earth to do, especially now because this movement now includes all of us. So for me, what's a little ironic about receiving an award for being an emerging leader is that so much of my leadership has really been about listening and learning from the future generation of change makers young people like Yara Shahidi and Rowan Blanchard. I'm trying to make Yara Shahidi president one day, please join me. And Marley, who we have here in the room. They know the truth, which is that their voice matters, their vote counts, despite what history might suggest and in spite of what those in traditional positions of power may be tweeting. But we still do live in a world that in subtle and overt and sometimes perverted ways tells girls that they have to choose between being valued for their bodies or their minds. And we still live in a world today that teaches girls that they can only be one thing. And I know for me growing up that was one of the most daunting things is picking the one thing to be. I remember growing up thinking that there's no way someone like me from a small town with big dreams and big hair who cared about style but craved deeper, more nuanced, more nourishing conversations about issues affecting women all over the world could possibly find her place. I couldn't see how someone who contains so much plurality could ever possibly find a singular fulfilling career path. I wanted to do it all, but in the pursuit of greatness, I panicked because I thought I'd have to pick a lane and sacrifice parts of me on the sides of the road. And then I found a role model who changed everything for me. She completely redefined what success could look like for someone like me. Before the days of Instagram, when it was actually really hard to find a black woman living her best life who wasn't Oprah. <laughs> I found her and I reveled in studying how her work carved out a lane for herself in media. She created an intersection for herself that authentically captured the essence of who she was and what she felt the world needed more of. She had done what Oprah always talks about aligning your personality with your purpose. And to me, that was true power. That was visionary. That was leadership. Her name was Harriet Cole. I wish she could be here tonight. Someone please text her and tell her that I'm shouting her out on this stage. <laughs> but she was my first boss. She gave me my first job at Ebony Magazine. Shout out to Ebony Magazine. Then one day, a woman named Anna Wintour, you might have heard of her, she waved her magic wand, as she does, and she appointed me to a leadership role that would come to define my first act. She appointed me, that same black girl with the big hair and big aspirations for what Teen Vogue could mean in a moment like this for a new generation of young people. 
So while our girls are still having to see, unfortunately, boardrooms full of old white men being given dominion over women's bodies, I'm energized because I know that I am a part of showing girls, and so are all of we, all of us in this room, are a part of showing girls that they don't have to fit into any of the boxes society places on us. I want girls who are looking at me and every woman in this room to know that leaders are also young. Leaders are black, leaders are women, leaders are queer, leaders are relentless and empathetic, leaders are strong and accessible, leaders are fair and demanding, leaders are stylish and intellectual. Leaders have fun, and we get the work done. So tonight, I bring with me on this stage all of the girls who I am merely a reflection of, the black women who opened doors for me, the women who appointed me, and mentors like Ava DuVernay, who remind me to continue to be courageous enough to appoint myself, because in 2018, that's what real leadership looks like. Thank you.